No, it was like 20 funnel webs in what? half an hour. They're like shiny little black guys and they got like big fangs and they get so angry and they arch up and they go <laughs> and sometimes they get so angry that they actually fall over backwards and then they're embarrassed and they're even really? more angry. <laughs> Welcome back to The Bike Shed. I'm Dave from Bikes Online and we are treated with a very special guest today here, Anthony Missouri, come all the way from Canada, BC over there near Vancouver. And he's been via a nice, sunny, hot, hot, hot place up north, but now he's come down to the rainy Sydney <laughs> to greet us. Welcome to The Bike Shed. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, stoked to be here. All right, so today we are going to be taking uh, Anthony on a bit of a uh, Aussie cuisine journey and get him to uh, sample a lot of tastes that we uh, have grown very familiar with as Aussies here. And uh, maybe you've got no idea what's coming. Uh, not a clue. Anyway, um, so <laughs> one bit of food or drink and followed by a question. And we're going to learn a little bit more about Anthony and uh, his journey here to Australia. All right, first up, we have an absolute classic of Aussie cuisine. It is the one and only Vegemite. We got it scraped on pretty thinly here, but that's not how you eat it, mate. You got to eat it a lot thicker than that because it's good, right? So have a whiff. And you know what that smell is. It see, smells that's, like... That's proper thickness. Like, you don't want to see the bread under that, right? No one wants to see that. All right, mate. So that's yours. I'm just going to do it thin because I don't want it to taste that good. Big bite. He hasn't even gagged yet. This is, oh, oh no, it's kicking in. All right, we'll need to get you a drink soon to wash that down. Sure. In the meantime, we're gonna ask the first question. It really now, just tastes like salt. Right? Yeah, that's it, that's pretty much salt. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've got a culinary challenge, but we've got a linguistic challenge for you as well. Now we've heard, oh, um, we've heard about your journey up to Crankworks and, and maybe some little challenges you've had. Now we've got, we have a list of iconic Australian destinations and Anthony is just simply gonna read them and- uh, I'm gonna read these all? Read them out to us, one, one for one. Let's see, see how you go. Man. All right, well number one, I've been messing this up for the whole week, so I know this one. It's cans, but I've been saying carns. Yeah, the entire week, and I got corrected by a guy, and he walked me through it, how to say it right. Number two, Eula Dula. <laughs> Maybe I won't. Uh, um, all right, that, so that one's Aladala. Aladala, okay. Bondi, I know that one, just because oh, yeah, it's, the, it's the beach, right? Yeah, it's a pretty yeah, famous yeah, place. Won that one. Melbourne. Mel. Burn. Melbourne. Burn. Right. <laughs> Melbourne. We can't give him that one, can we? Mate, it's Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, like a bin. Kind of like Melbourne. Melbourne. Uh. Just like Mel bin. Okay. Yeah. McKay. Nearly, mate. Mackay. Mackay. Yeah. <laughs> this one's in Tasmania. Okay. That might be a clue. Lawn Seston. <laughs> mate! <laughs> that is solid. Yeah, I got that. It's wrong. It's actually Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get it though, for real? Yeah, like officially, yeah. Cool, yeah. all right. You gotta spell it out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canberra? <laughs> no, no, it's Canberra. Canberra. But there's like, that would be B-R-A, no, Canberra? Exactly, yeah. The you can skip a couple of letters and <laughs> far more efficient. It's good trails there. Wollongong. That was, that was good. Mate, you know, we've got a uh, particularly Canadian on, on our team who this, this struggles is, with Wollongong. This is not spelt cans though, <laughs> this is cans, okay? <laughs> Mate, you've done better than most. All right, we'll, we'll give you that. Um, so you've just got to finish off the whole jar of Vegemite. Try, try again here. We got another one. Uh, well, yeah, while you're just polishing off the last of that Vegemite, <laughs> here's a bonus round for you. This little suburb here, it's just down the road. Wollamulu. Wollamulu. You've heard it here first. Wallumaloo. Wallumaloo. <laughs> if you combine the first one and the second one, like you're pretty much there. Wallumaloo. 
Woolamaloo. He's done well. Woolamaloo. He's done well. Woolamaloo. Woolamaloo. Yeah. Woolamaloo. Yeah, you're getting wise. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> so this one is uh, chocolate milk. All right, up next. Uh, yeah, you could call it chocolate milk, but that would be an insult to this beautiful can of Milu? goodness. <laughs> It's Milo? Milo, yeah. No, okay. you're onto it. You're onto it. Now, the <laughs> interesting thing with Milo, um, I mean, opening it up is half the joy. Yeah, crack that thing open. We got some good Aussie full cream milk. Do you know what full cream milk is? Like real thick milk? It's like a 2%. Okay, we have 2% milk. Yeah, I know, but we don't call it 2%. Oh, uh, okay. Just milk that tastes like real milk. It's just full cream. Yeah, Toma milk. Because it's got all the cream, but now there's no more cream on it. Okay. <laughs> but the cream hasn't been taken so out. So how much, how much of a scoop should I put in each of these? Uh, <laughs> like a heat bring? That is the question, isn't it? Now, um, yeah, you got to keep going. Spilled a bunch of milu. Get a smell of it. So this is going to take a while, so I'm just going to help him a bit. It's gonna be like a milkshake. I mean, this is kind of a minimum, right? So enough milk, probably. There Only that much time. milk? And then you, you basically, that's probably enough stirring. You, we need more Milo in this one. Five more spoons, probably. See, it's like, it's so fluid. It's more of a solid consistency is what we're Is what it's supposed to be, really? Yeah, this is like, it's wetter than hero dirt. You know, like it's, it's like a wet day in Whistler. And then the sun came out for half an hour. <laughs> so it's still slippery, right? But like, so it shouldn't like, be liquid. Right, anymore. so it's like you're half drinking it, half eating it. Yeah. All right, get it in. Yeah, that's good, I like that. Now you gotta get the spoon and just get that crusty stuff off the top. Is this like what you actually do? Yeah. You feel the crunch? Yeah, it's pretty good. There we go. So now you know Milo, or Milo, Milu. It's delicious, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Mate, it's also an incredible ice cream enhancer. Okay. Yeah, pull that all over your ice cream, same like 50-50 ratio, and just mash it in. Mate, in 2011, when you were just 15 years old, you burst onto the slope style scene in a pretty impressive way in Whistler. You boosted double the height of any of the kind of seasoned professionals. You flip whipped the last step down. Um, pretty insane stunts for a 15 year old and it landed you on the podium. Mm -hmm. Wild start, then you've spent, you know, more than 10 years kind of at, at the top of the game. What are two career highlights for you? Definitely that first year. Um, surreal, getting to ride with all these dudes that I grew up watching, riding like right beside them, um, and then ending up on the podium. It's like something I never expected. I mean, like, just, like, a month ago, I was, like, still frothing over, like, all these guys and, you know, seeing them around and, and whatever was pretty unbelievable. Um, Who did you so, share the podium with then? Uh, Brandon and Cam Zink. So pretty, pretty solid dudes. In, yeah. in free ride sure. mountain biking. Yeah. I mean, you know, we just saw in, in, when they were talking about the, in, in the slope style of it, Crankworks. Yep. Brandon won 11... Yeah, crank he still works. won the most crank works. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And Mill has a had Eight. a very solid streak. Yeah. But like, yeah, man, you're on the on the podium with those legends mm -hmm. at fifteen. Pretty surreal. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your other highlight? Highlight. Probably the year I won crank works in France. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. I'd say the year actually I got third again in Whistler in twenty fourteen. And that was the same year. Let, let's not dismiss that he won Crankworks. That was the same year. Style in France. Um, so I won France and then I got third in Whistler that same 2014. year. 2014. 2014. Yeah. So that was a, a wild year. That was a wicked year for me. Um, everything just seemed to be like working, clicking for me that year. Hmm. I don't know if you can see, I can't handle the chocolate. I need some more milk. <laughs> okay. It's a little too thick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thirsty after the lap. Bloody. Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> Need to wash it down. All right, a family favorite, a delicacy from Arnott's, shapes. 
There's a lot of flavors. This is pizza. Everybody likes pizza. So Everyone likes pizza. It's basically the most mini pizza you've ever seen. So this is popular here. Yeah, for sure. Popular stuff. Yeah. I mean, up at the local dirt jump trails, like Whoa. chances are every kid is eating these. All right, you're not going to stop eating those, are you? These are good. <laughs> All right, so there are there are pizza shapes. There's a lot of other good flavors. They actually do it in wait for it, Vegemite flavor. Oh no. Yeah, so that's pretty savage. You competed in a few rampages. Mm -hmm. Uh, a bit beyond the standard slope style course. Mm -hmm. And your first one, 2012, ahead of your time, you ran a single crown fork. So, Rock Shock Lyric, was it? Yep, yep, Rock Shock Lyric. Um. That's, um, that's pretty wild for the time. Now, we saw Seminark win last year with a Zeb. Big Rock Shock fork, yep. single crown. Um, he was the only one on a single crown. There was a lot of talk about it. A few people probably forgot to go back through the archives and see that it had been done before. I even heard Kyle Strait ran a single crown at Rampage once. Mm -hmm. He's been at every Rampage. Mm -hmm. um, we see Sam and I bring it out, and he's seriously put it to use. Bar spins, tail, tail whip drop, flip whip. Yep. Wild. Um, now we see a bunch of riders getting ready for the next rampage this year, and there's more people with single crown. Is there? Oh yeah. Okay. It's happening. Yeah. So. I mean, it's bound to happen, right? Like, especially with these bigger, more capable single crown forks that are pretty similar to a boxer in travel. Um, I rode a 160 mil, super small. Yeah. Uh, compared to like 190 mil zaps that you can have now. Um, totally. So same my question. What do you think of this, the current direction? I'm not saying the direction has changed or anything, but what do you think of the direction of big mountain free ride competition like Rampage? Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be riding single crown forks just to give them more variety in their runs, add a little bit more tricks that they may be able to do down the run, like maybe tail ups, bar spins. Um, if the fork's just as capable, why not? Hmm. Well, because maybe it takes away from the soul of just sending it. Yeah, but I mean, it's a 190 mil fork. It's no different. It's the same travel, same damper in that fork. So it's pretty much the exact same thing besides you can spin your bars around. Totally. Yeah. And a little add-on before we get into more delicacies. What do you reckon is going to be the craziest trick that we're going to see? At Rampage this year. Yeah, well, like what's going to come across from slope style to Rampage? I mean, of course, we're going to see huge drops. We're going to see... Well, yeah, crazy shoots. But maybe like a big a big truck driver on a drop would be really sick. Emil is doing some trucks off some pretty big drops at Proving Grounds. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be pretty rad. It looks good. It says made with irresistible real chocolate. So, so you dip it in milk like a cookie? Well, you can eat it all sorts of ways. Um, this is another another classic from Arnott's, the Tim Sam. This is the original. There are heaps of different flavors, kind of like the shapes. Okay. A lot of flavor options. This is um, the original. Not so savory. This is the OG. Um, so it's purely chocolate. Now, there's different ways to eat it. I'm going to show you um, what we call the Tim Tam Slam. Get some Milo. Or a, it actually works really well with a hot drink, like a coffee or a cup of tea or anything like okay. that as well. So you gotta kind of just remove the top and the bottom. Right. That's good. Now you can't hold it for too long because it'll melt. Yep. It's already melted. And then you gotta get another one. So we'll load this up. We've obviously gone way beyond the correct ratios of milk to Milo. And so you use it as a straw. Because you can see the center of it it's is harder. kind of softer and the outside's harder. So you gotta get that in there and just keep on sucking it until you. Get that goodness. Mm, oh no. He's lost it. Mine fell in. Mine tastes great. But I've been doing it for years, mate. I got a little bit in there. Every night for dessert, this is what every Aussie child needs to eat. Oh, if they want to have another really Go again. Though. Yeah. Do you reckon you could handle another one? Mm. All right. During 10 years of slope style competition, you never raced head to head or against the clock. Um, once. 
I did a speed and style. The same year I ran uh, one crankworks in France. And I broke my bike first lap, first race through. I overshot a flat spin on the last jump. And yeah, I couldn't continue. I had to go fix my bike. Right on. Okay. So 2014, you did that? Yep. Yep. And yep. sending it flat, high speed off a jump. Yeah, and I don't even, it wasn't even head-to-head -head racing either. I believe it was just seating runs. So mm -hmm. it was like single person, uh, no head-to-head racing. Like our mate Jaden Wilson, who Met, in qualifying, got to the front in the seating, the just couldn't land that front. Yeah. <laughs> First time he's ever crashed a front flip. Poor Jaden. Next time, mate. So <laughs> it turns out you're fast. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Not if you eat too many Tim Tams. <laughs> um, so, in Whistler, you did some, you qualified, and your qualifying position put you in finals, in the first round of the finals, up against Thomas Lemoyne. Lemoyne. So he is right now... Second round of finals. Second I got to buy my first round because um, somebody pulled out, they hurt themselves. Right on. Um, okay. So technically, yeah, my first round head-to-head -head racing in the finals was against Lemoyne. Yeah. But of all people, the guy, I don't think he's ever lost one. I mean, he's currently six-time speed and style champ. Yeah. You know, had him to the line there pretty much. It was super tight. Yeah, well, I you, you got beat him out. on the first race. And we tied for tricks. Tied for tricks in the second race. Yeah, but, uh, he tied on just, both jumps. Yeah, he got me by like 0.4 or something yeah. like that yeah. of a second. Yeah, less than half a second. So... Um, that was a shame. He obviously went on to win. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and he did. he's, he, did he get King of Crankworks? I forgot to pay too much attention. The guy's oh, a very well-rounded rider. Yeah, he's in second right now, I believe, for the King of Crankworks. King of Crankworks. Now, how did you approach qualifying at Cairns <laughs> differently? I and just, did it play out? Yeah, right? so I, essentially, you can kind of look at the brackets of where you qualify and then you can figure out who you might get matched against depending on that first seeding position. So like my goal was just to, I knew Lemoyne was going to seed really high. So I just had to like get the fastest run I could and seed as high as I could so that I got matched up with him later in the rounds. Yeah. Uh, so just keep as far away from him as right. possible. Yeah. So I think he qualified first. I qualified third. Mm -hmm. So I got matched up with him. A little bit farther down the line. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, how did you decide to just like, oh, I'm just going to qualify heaps, heaps faster this time? Well, I didn't just decide that. I tried. <laughs> like, obviously, I didn't know until I looked at the, the times. Right. But, uh, I mean, there was like a gap. You learned on... some lessons in Whistler, you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought I qualified like fifth, sixth at Whistler. I thought that was pretty high because there was like quite a few riders. Hmm. Um, I didn't really fully understand like how to tell how the brackets worked yeah, or whatever. Off. Yeah. yeah, so um, and there was <clears throat> one gap in the the cans course that a lot of people in seating weren't doing, um, which like gave you like a pretty big advantage in that middle straightaway before the rock garden. Yeah. So I think um, that helped me out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get into some details, but let's get some more food. I like these. Take these home. Where is this? All right, now we are up with a birthday party favorite for any little child. Um, it's like a sprinkled donut on a piece of bread. We call this one fairy bread. Fairy bread. It's bread, buttered, close enough to the crust. Butter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Butter. Yeah. Butter. Butter. Um, <laughs> and then hundreds and thousands, you know, hundreds and thousands. Right, sprinkles. You know, the hundreds and thousands. These things. Yeah, ours look different. I'm not sure what. What are those supposed to taste like? I mean, I mean, it's a sure goodness. It's the worst thing you could feed a child, and that's all we feed them at birthday parties. Don't make a mess, mate. You don't want a child to make a mess. Mm. It's actually been a while since I've had this, and it's great. It's not bad. It's pretty good. It tastes like a donut. Like a, like a sprinkled donut mm. to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hear. So I want to know a bit more about your racing. <laughs> Just like dumb time. Hey, we're trying to be serious here. 
Um, I'm just busy. Anyway, so you ended up against Lemoyne again, right? I in guess the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. Now, first heat went down pretty well. He had a slight advantage in speed. What yeah, was the like difference really, off of the first really, heat? really small. Yeah, tiny. Yeah, right. tiny. Um, we tied again. On tricks? On tricks. Um, um, now, you went into the second heat and you went really deep yeah, on sorry. the first jump and I went over the burb. Stacked it. Yeah. yeah. I want you to take us through what was going through your mind from when the gate dropped to when you're lying in dirty, dirty filth. I think he had a, he had a pretty right good away. gate. He's got real good gates. So it's tough to keep up with him. Does he have a BMX him. background? Yeah, yeah. And he's a big guy. He makes a, a lot BMX of, background these makes a lot of power. So you can like really get a good start. <clears throat> um, so I think he, he got a good start. And I was just trying to make up like a little bit of distance before the first jump. And I just went huge. And like... So by distance on the first jump, you, you went in faster? Do you just keep pedaling harder at it? I guess what? so, yeah. Right. Yeah, it went pretty deep. And I did like three quarters down the landing. Mm. And... The berm there, you, got, you had to be right in the center of the jump to get that berm, and I landed like in the berm. So yeah. I like rode on the top of it for a bit, and I tried to get in, and I ended up blotting. Just... Yeah, front tire washed out. But I got like, landed on kind of like the back side of the berm, so it was like nice, soft. Okay. Dirt. So you didn't get hurt? No, no, not at all. All right, and then you were able to get back on, then bronze into medal, the then. bronze medal, a small final up against the Aussie, mm -hmm. Luke Parker. Yep. Uh, also BMX background, not so much race from my understanding is he's, um, I mean, he can pull some stunts, doesn't mind to throw the bike around. Oh yeah, and he did um, a bunch of double whips like all day, super, double whip super seems consistent. Like, is that, is that a, a safe trick. move or is yeah. that risky for That's speed a, and style? I'd say like a riskier move for speed right. and style. I think anything that you're taking your feet off, any kind of like mm -hmm. tail whips, because we see you got to be on as soon as you land. You got to pedal. Or you want to pedal, at least at yeah. the end, right? So, so if, you, if he lands with his feet a bit skewed, yeah, or, whatever, or if you you're not land, but like up. you slip a foot, you're not going to get that full score for the trick mm. that you're doing. Um, True. Okay, so it's, so it's not just like you got to do the spins and the whips and the whatevers. Like you got you. you gotta do it there's clean. a judgment on on the yeah, landing. yeah, totally. And yeah. if you do like a flip tuck and you like kind of do some crappy little tuck no hander, yeah, you're going to get less points than somebody yeah. who does like a. Big, a full, full extension, or, Tom Wrigley. Yeah, extension. Yeah. yeah, or like three tables. Or yours. <coughs> um, your Funny tucks. Yeah. Do you? And so, what I really want to know is, do you get bonus points if your front tire snaps your visor off? <laughs> I don't think so. That was completely unintentional. There should have been bonus points, I reckon. On it's that like, on that particular like front combo. flip, um, I snapped a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. So I like was really Snap. trying to like. We might need to inform our audience what. What is this? When I when I snap the front flip, um, just basically like the initial inertia to get your rotation going for the front flip. To to change the rotation, right? Because I mean, a jump's putting you up like this. Yeah, exactly. And so then you're you're gonna go, snap yeah. your weight forward using your brake um, and your your body. Oddly enough, you kind of preload backwards to like get your momentum to snap harder forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, sorry, exact, are you saying I could do a front flip? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you could. It's all this commitment, man. Just got to go for it. Yeah, okay. Can you front flip a trampoline? No, I can't. Oh. Uh, I mean, like, front flip into a pool. There you go. Then you could definitely do it. You heard it here yeah. first. But um, I just thought it was going to under-rotate the front flip, so I, like, I typically will look between my, <laughs> my bike <clears throat> And my shoulder to like kind of look at the landing so I'm not just like front flipping blind. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like over rotating or spinning a little bit fast, I can kind of adjust for that or like see it coming. Um, so on that particular front flip, I kind of snapped like a little bit slower because um, that right jump was easier to do it on the, mm -hmm. the left jump for whatever reason because they're supposed to be the same, but they never are. They, they always feel yeah. slightly different. So I was like really trying to look to like get my weight more forward and get that rotation because I thought I was slightly going to under rotate and um, my visor just clipped my front wheel and it pulled it off. Yeah. So normally your head's right to the side of the wheel. Yeah, right to the side of the mm -hmm. 
um, yeah. on a front flip tuck. And then if I'm doing like a regular front flip, it's usually kind of I'm looking down between my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Well, I reckon there were points that could have been gained, but um, didn't matter anyway. You... I didn't even know it was gone. I had no idea <laughs> it happened. And then somebody said, where'd your visor go? Full on. Feeling my visor. I had no Nikolai idea. Nikolai style. Yeah, yeah. He was hyped. Nikolai was stoked. I can imagine. <laughs> All right. This table is a mess. Caramello Cola. So it's just like a... <laughs> what? Cola. Koala. Koala. Oh, it's a koala. It's a koala. Koala. <laughs> Whenever you see an A, just make it like... You know, <laughs> I can't believe I butchered that that bad. Koala. Like a Corolla? <laughs> so it's got marshmallow or something in it. I mean, it's Cadbury. Uh, marsh marshmallow. That's like that's a good idea, but it's, it's not. It doesn't it's have anything. Well, that's caramello. Just kind of, oh man, it's your, you're gonna have to open this for me. Yeah, yeah man, that one's pretty done for you. You just gotta go do half of it, and then see see the goodness. So you ended up in third, despite his risky double whips, which were a lot faster than a fronty tuck. Yeah, like totally. He's back on the ground faster. Yeah. But you had the speed, you got third. What are your, what are your goals, man? Now you, you realize you're a fast racer. You got the speed. You got the style and the skills. I guess a goal would be to beat Lemoyne because he's knocked me out twice. <laughs> Guy, so. Yeah. 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 Practice some gates, maybe. Mm -hmm. Get a better snap. The BMX track. Yep. And then maybe figure out some tricks that I could kind of like, he knows what I'm, we've ridden so much together, we like know kind of like what we're gonna do. Mm. So it's easy for us to like match each other's tricks. Yeah. So maybe if I come like with a bit of a curve ball and uh, do something that he's not expecting that might score higher than what he's gonna do, that could be a totally. trick. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I feel like there's, there are a lot of tactics in speed and style to delve into. Yeah, right? totally. I mean, you, you got to be like consistent with your tricks too, because you're doing this round after round after round. I did yeah. probably like 12 front flip no-handers that day. For sure. Yeah. And the, it paid off. And I mean, another Aussie you went up against earlier, Mike Ross. You went the, huge the, on the, the double. The kid throws insane tricks, mm -hmm. right? We saw him cash roll a flat drop. Mm -hmm. And he was year. cash rolling that first shot like every single cash time. Cash rolling. And then he went to double flip. And I mean, if you're double flipping at that speed, Turns out he kind of missed the landing. And that's the right? hard thing too, is like you're, you're racing, but at the same time you got to do these tricks. So it's like sometimes you're a little bit behind and you're like, okay, I'm going to like juice really hard into this jump and I'm going to go fast, but got to like be Which wise kind of what happened too. to you that's against what... Lemoyne second heat a bit. Yeah, where you exactly. Behind, and that's kind of, I think similar to what happened to Mike Ross is that left jump was easy to go deep on because you were higher in the corner. <clears throat> so I think he just was in race mode and he just went huge, um, yeah. which is like, that's a tough thing about yeah. speed and style. You don't- Fortunately, he got back up and yeah, he was went okay. again, right? Like it was a big yep. Yeah, yeah, and he did another race. He is one, one tough cookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, speaking of cookies, the next delicacy is uh, an Aussie cookie. It's not just an Aussie cookie. This one is equally New Zealand-ish. It's an Anzac. Cookie. Anzac? Yeah, so you've probably heard of Anzac from the Vanzacs, which are a bunch of New Zealanders and Aussies that had a van and raced downhill. David McMillan and those, okay. those crew. Uh, Anzac is uh, acronyms, and acronyms, like letters that stand saying, Australia and New Zealand Army Corps. Okay. So in World War One, Australia and New Zealand joined together, went to World War One. And they are the Anzacs. And this cookie commemorates the Anzac spirit. We eat it definitely on Anzac Day that we celebrate. But we have a day called Anzac Day. Yep. And um, where we, we um, recognize, we kind of remember um, this battle in Gallipoli, which was, was pretty hectic. A lot of Anzacs lost their lives. And anyway, it's a, this is a good trail snack. It's always... Yeah, I'm sure plenty of uh, dirt jumps have been built fueled by these. Mm -hmm. And you can 
if, it's if good. The, if the cup's the right size, no, no. it's it's another good thing to dip in. You can't use it like a straw. I mean, it tastes kind of like an oatmeal cookie, but it's not. Yeah, mm. I can't. I think it tricks you into thinking it's healthy. <laughs> I don't think it is. All right. Saw you after the speed and style. There was the big event, the slope style. You've spent, as, as we've mentioned, plenty, plenty of Crankworx slope styles mm -hmm. over the years. And Crankworx invited you to be the insider on the commentary team. Right, so I got to be um, the judge's insider, explain um, what the judges might be thinking, um, maybe explain a few things that people that have never ridden slope style or aren't too familiar with it, how it works and why the riders may be getting the scores that they are. Yeah, I, I found it so insightful. Um, I mean, Cam McCall, also an, an ex you know, slope style pro, mm -hmm. he obviously knows a lot of what he's talking about. Um, Alan Cook, BMX background, knows heaps. Um, yeah. But the insights that you added to that commentary were, were brilliant. Um, you know, things like talking about even line choice, say like Tom Eister hipping off that thing right. rather than going into the, the right. crocodile tail, whatever it's mm -hmm. called. God just sevens out of it. And so it takes a totally different line and I didn't see it. And you gave those insights. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of nerve wracking, like live stream on oh, there. So what my question for you is what what were you more nervous about doing the doing the commentary or the food we were about to dish up for you? Uh, the commentary for sure. <laughs> yeah, man, we haven't gone hard enough. on Speaking the food. of <laughs> he's too trusting of us Aussies. I wasn't like really I've never done that before, obviously. So just speaking on camera live pretty nerve-wracking like at the beginning I think I fumbled like a few words because I was pretty nervous and like sweating and stuff but once I got talking it wasn't too bad yeah yeah no well I think you did a wonderful job um I'll, you know hopefully in future crankworks and what's the plural of crankworks crankworks with an s but it's no it's not crankworks so crankworks apostrophe crankworks is <laughs> Actually, plurals don't have apostrophes. What am I talking about? I'm losing it. Oh, all right. I don't think there is a plural for it. All right. Anyway, down the track, we'd love to uh, see you there again. Yeah, yeah I'd that, be stoked um, to do it. It's uh, Yeah, you've offered great insights like you are today. All right. Last up for today, mate. Cool, refreshing, very sweet drink. What's uh, Pasito? Yeah, I... Uh, I mean, there's two options really. There's competing competing brands here. It's not a monopoly like Arnott's. Um, so there's also Schweppes Passiona, very similar. Okay. It's passion fruit flavor. But what's Pasito? It's just the name of it, Pasito. Oh. Oh. Kirk's Pasito. Okay. Um, whoa. Yeah, Holy just, crap. That's sweet. Another good one for the kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think Get I can like bouncing off the walls. Well, that needs like some water in it or something. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's so cool. Holy cow. Um, yeah. <laughs> and typically we'll just have a whole bottle of it. Which, yeah. Uh, so, mate, last question. Um, this is your first proper trip to Australia, other than a you know short of, layover. Yeah, layover in Melbourne once in Melbourne, um, mate. What were your highlights? Um, what are you looking forward to for the rest of the trip? Just getting to see Australia, obviously. Never been here before. Like the trees, the palm trees, all that, and crocodiles. I mean, in Cairns too. Like Savage never, beasts. I've never been somewhere where it's just like so much things that could do you harm. Um, <laughs> first thing people were saying to me was like, don't go in the water, don't go near the edge of the water, don't go in the forest. If you step on a stick it might be a snake <laughs> you know we don't have these problems back home really it's not a lot of but you do have bears and cougars <clears throat> yeah but I, it's very rare and like, you don't accidentally step on them I guess. yeah exactly yeah, yeah, totally or they don't come coming out of the edge of the water you know and, and then we went and seen the crocodile uh, show and 
exactly you said you go to the edge of the water and you splash around a bit it's like a dinner bell for them so and we did go swimming once um port douglas and the lifeguard we were talking to him and he legit told us like don't go on the beach at night at all not anywhere on the beach like there's crocodiles here we see them all the time yeah dinner yeah literally wild well um, mate hopefully we had a bit of sunshine here in manly and we can get out for a, a swim here I mean, they're obviously, I mean, they're, they're sharks that all eat you, but like, unlikely, less likely than crocodiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> all right, Tone, before you go, uh, we want to give away this fox helmet that you're going to be wearing. Um, you're going to sign it. We're going to give this away oh, to one of you. <laughs> um, all you've got to do is get totally stoked to ride. you got to go to the polygon bikes youtube channel uh link in the description below you'll be able to find the video with anthony it's called resurgence and it is full of banger tricks and what you can do is comment below and say <laughs> your favorite trick of anthony's and we're gonna pick a random winner that has commented an actual legit trick and um you're gonna get this helmet sent out to you uh, this one's for Aussie subscribers only. Like and subscribe. Don't be a jerk.